Good evening, and welcome to our 2021-2022 Parent Night. This is 8th grade U.S. History, and I'm Renee DeBach. Our time period, as you can see, for this course covers first encounters to them around the Gilded Age, about 1607 to 1900. Here's a little bit about me. I did my undergrad at Alverno College in Milwaukee, my graduate work at Concordia University in Chicago. My ESL endorsement, English as a Second Language, is from the University of St. Francis. I was born and raised in Wisconsin and then worked in Chicago before coming out to enjoy life in the great Pacific Northwest and to teach the wonderful children of Mercer Island. So I know that you've got about six of these to look at, so I'll try to be brief. You can always go back and rewind if you want to watch more later go in depth. Basically what we do in U.S. history is work in groups and individually to strengthen students' historical thinking skills. We're looking at helping them learn how to listen to others, to ask good questions, to think about the why, and then to be able to articulate that in writing and to be able to deepen their comprehension of what they read. We want to go beyond just the surface level. You will find that in our classes, we like to use technology and students will use all kinds of apps, websites. We have ways that while having them work on the traditional reading and writing, we can enhance that experience through the use of these kind of resources. So your student might come home and tell you about different things that we've done where they've been working with things like class kick, iCivics, the Kahoot games, Sporkle we like. They've already started working on some mapping with that. So there'll be a variety of things that you'll hear about that we're using in our classroom in order to help strengthen the learning and the understanding and to make sure that we remove some of the barriers to access. That's a wonderful thing about using these apps is they give us chances to be able to have students get the ability to revisit something they want to see. Even what you're watching right now is an example of that. Rather than just having to come in, hear me, you might be distracted, you might not be able to hear my voice, you might not be able to come to Parent Night. This way with the video, you can rewind, rewatch, and get the learning that you need. Similar idea with what we do in our classes. There's a lot on this slide, and I won't go through all of it right now, but rest assured that we're working on helping your student develop those historical thinking skills of chronological reasoning, comparing, contextualization, historical interpretation and synthesis, and that ability to create historical arguments. Throughout the year, we work with students on giving them multiple opportunities to practice these skills. The topics that we learn about are similar probably to what you remember from school, starting with the expansion of the colonies, developing through the revolution, constitution and creation of the nation, movement forward into the West, challenges as the country begins to split apart, become so divided before the Civil War. We look at the Civil War as both a war and an event that is going to be a real pivotal moment in U.S. history, the change that occurs when four million formerly enslaved people are freed, the impact of the death and destruction of the war, changes in government, the assassination of the president, all of that we cover before we move into Reconstruction, where we look at how do you pick up the pieces after an event like the American Civil War. Then we finish with the Gilded Age, where we look at the role of large waves of immigration, increases in technology to shape what will become the American century. Why we do this? Because we know that students need to know what has happened in the past in order to understand the present and be able to have a positive impact on the future. We know they need to understand if they're going to participate as active citizens in our nation, they've got to be able to understand these events and be able to have the skills to process what they see out there. We want them to have a deeper understanding of the context of issues from when they're old enough to be voting which will happen within about four years, to have an awareness of the issues around justice, equity, and access, to be able to have empathy that we can strengthen through interacting with other classmates, to hear different perspectives, and to learn different perspectives throughout history. 
because if you look at the quote here on this leaf, if you don't know history, then you don't know anything. You're a leaf that doesn't know it's part of a tree. We feel like that's an important idea because we have to know how we've gotten to be in the world that we live in at this time. When it comes to grading, we're part of the pilot program of Grading for Equity, G for E. You should also be able to reference a video that will be included in the materials for tonight that explains this further. But basically what this is, is the idea that we're working on levels, not just collecting points. Not every assignment that we'll offer in our class will give students a chance for a four. Some are two or three level as we develop some of that basic content knowledge. We use rubrics when we're going to be grading something so that students know what it takes to earn a four. And this, to me, I like this visual of the tricycle, the bike with training wheels, riding the bike, and then being skilled enough to be popping a wheelie. When you read through that information, that helps explain how, with students, we talk about it, thinking about the video game analogy also that when you start learning a new game, video game, musical skill, sport, you don't start out as a pro. There's practice, repetition, mistakes to learn from, trying things a different way, trying again, perseverance, resilience. That's a part of what we're focusing on because, again, in life we don't just want to collect points. We need to be able to learn how to learn from our mistakes, how to keep going, and how to build. So that's how we work with our grading. For getting to the resources of what we have available, for kids we keep it pretty simple. We've got our Schoology course where we've got a weekly folder, a previous week folder, a hub with some documents and links. We use updates if we have to change due to things like weather, a technology problem, some kind of a difference in schedule. And for you, you can look forward to, usually we'll send a little message every other Friday or so with an update of what we've been doing. We sometimes will send you a Google survey. There's the IMS emails that the school will send out and then the district messages. So you can be looking for all of those. And thinking about your student because you want to know what you can do to help your student succeed. I would say ask your student each evening what work they have to finish up what we did in class, kind of talk about what we we're up to. Um, if you could help your child think about learning how to use a calendar, electronic or paperwork, if you can show them how you stay organized, that's a skill that we're not born with. That has to be developed and takes lots of practice. So if we can all pull together with our eighth graders, that helps. Um, please also remind them to charge that iPad each night because they're definitely going to need to be using it in our class and other classes for sure this year. If you can, watch the news sometimes. Talk about what you see, listen to the radio in the car, and be able to talk together a little bit. Students grow in their knowledge and understanding from hearing different perspectives. So that's always a great exercise to work on with your student. And encourage your student to advocate for help when they need it. To reach out. We won't bite. Ask questions. Let us know what they need. Because sometimes... There can be needs that I'm not even aware of. I can't help if I don't know. And for contacting, email's the best way. And there's my email address right there, renee.debach at mercerislandschools.org. I usually respond within 48 hours, often sooner than that, but not guaranteed. And I won't generally respond to the kids after 8 p.m. because we want to be winding down for the night, getting ready to get that rest, taking care of business, and if there is a concern, it'll usually keep because we're all working together to do this. And so reach out when you need it. Same thing for your students. I'm here and what we want is to be able to enjoy our learning together. So thank you for listening to this. Please reach out if you have any questions. Look for the survey that I'm going to be sending you through Skyward. And I look forward to our partnership this year. I've already enjoyed getting to know some of you through the work that students have been doing, and I am hoping that we are going to have a fantastic year. Students are going to learn a lot. We're going to be together five days a week in class, so enjoy the rest of your meetings for tonight. I hope 
you enjoy all your videos and let's have a great year.